My entitled neighbors blame my parents for the scratch that they made on their own car, claiming that if we didn't ask them to move it out of our driveway, they wouldn't have scratched it in the first place. Here's what happened. So at my parents' previous house, they shared a driveway with the neighbors. The driveway was very narrow, and a car could barely drive between the houses. And then the driveway became wider into two garages for both houses. For 25 years, previous neighbors had no issues, especially as they mostly used their garages for storage rather than cars. But when new neighbors moved in, that's when trouble began. The neighbor's wife would always park in the driveway, making it hard to walk or get bikes through, and my parents, trying to be nice, just ignored it. Then their son got a car, and they started parking two cars in the driveway, taking up the entire space of the driveway. Finally, after a year or so, my parents cleared out their garage and told the neighbors they couldn't block the driveway anymore. The neighbors agreed, but continued parking there, insisting my parents just knock to ask them to move. Well, this led to my parents having to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, sometimes on the weekends, or even wait 10 to 20 minutes for them to move the cars as they were either out walking the dog or they just didn't hear us. And this was really frustrating for both parties. After months of this, the neighbors cleared their own garage but while trying to park, the wife scratched the entire side of her car. She then screamed at my mom and blamed my parents as they had forced her to park in the garage and demanded that they pay for the damage. Well, my mom being fed up yelled back, saying it was a shared driveway and they never had any issues with previous neighbors. And then she just shut the door in her face. And the best part about it is that they never brought it up again. So maybe they realized how ridiculous it was, but they never said hi or spoke to my parents for the entire year before my parents moved out. But at least they finally stopped parking in the driveway because their attitude about the entire scenario was just completely out of control. Yeah, these people were being super entitled. Like, how selfish do you have to be to act like that? They really took up the entire driveway and then was like, oh, if you want me to move our car, then just ask us. But it's like, no, buddy, get your car out of my side of the driveway. I should not have to ask you to move your car. Like, what is going on right now? Like, if someone did that to me, I would be half tempted just to tow their car. Because that's such a selfish thing to do. Not to mention the fact that they tried to be like, oh yeah, you scratched my car. This is your fault. And it's like, are you kidding me? We haven't even parked our car in the driveway. You literally scratched your car on your own. So truly, I'm glad your parents got to move away from them, because their attitude was completely unacceptable. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out. Link down below in the description. Also, go to Am I the jerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. An entitled jerk walks into me on my wheelchair claiming that I was going too fast and that I need to slow down and watch where I'm going. And despite the fact that my wheelchair was literally parked and this guy walked into me because he was staring at his phone too much, I snapped at this guy in a way that I don't think he'll ever forget. Here's what happened. Okay, let me start off by saying that I am a wheelchair user. An accident in 2016 left me with a progressive disability and last year I graduated to a tricked out power chair as a consolation prize. Now, my chair is extremely noticeable if you are paying attention. Not only is it larger than life, but I have a four-foot flexible pole on the back of it with a multicolored pinwheel on top, a pink fairy, a rainbow pride flag, and a bright yellow tag to let people know that I'm visually impaired. And there are literally rainbow butterfly wings on the back of my seat, so I am impossible to miss. So there I am at my local grocery store, bopping along and just doing my own thing. I mean, independence feels great. I finished my shop and I meandered outside. And just as I got outside, a group was going in, so I stopped to let them pass. And one would think, this is all good, right? Well, not so much. I should mention, I was also very much brightly colored, wearing pink short pants and a bright yellow t-shirt, with rainbow striped pride sneakers on my feet, and a rainbow tie-dye bucket hat. So you probably get the point. I'm hard to miss, right? But oh, my friend, I assumed way too much. There I am, quietly waiting for the group to go into the store, and along comes some jerk staring at his phone. There were people in front of me on my left left and behind me, you know, because it was a busy shopping day. I had nowhere to move to without running over a very unhappy pedestrian. I watched this guy booking it into the store, his face intently staring at a screen, and then bam, he runs right into my legs and the side of my chair. Now, these power chairs are heavy. Mine is a new model with lithium batteries, and it still weighs 250 pounds without me in it. And the dude slammed so hard, he moved me sideways with my brakes locked. This idiot glanced up from his screen long enough to glare at me and say, slow down. And as were Canadian, he didn't even give me an excuse me or sorry. So at that point, I was pissed. I said to him, excuse you, jerk. I was stopped. You plowed right into me. I then fixed on him with a patented Canadian glare of disapproval. Well, the guy gave me another glare, looked around, and then mumbled. And then he eventually huffed off. And I will say, I'm normally a pretty chill guy, but when entitled jerks walk along with the manners of a toddler and do something like that, it really pisses me off. Yeah, that is insane that that guy would be like, wow, you need to slow down, when he couldn't have been more obviously 
staring at his phone instead of looking forward. And this is 100% his fault, by the way. The original poster was parked in their scooter. They couldn't go anywhere and they weren't even moving. So for this guy to be like, wow, slow down, that's clearly him projecting because he's the one that needs to slow down and look up from his stupid phone once in a while because the way he reacted was completely unacceptable. I found out that my girlfriend cheated on me a year ago, but my legal status in the United States depends on us staying together. And I'm now at such a crossroads that I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. I met my girlfriend over a year ago while I was on a J-1 visa in the United States. I met her only nine days after arriving, so we basically spent my entire three months there together. We fell in love pretty fast and had an amazing time. We knew I had to go home at the end of the three months, but we had many deep conversations about us and what we wanted and decided we would give being in a long distance relationship a shot. I left the States and about four weeks later, she came to visit me in my home country. It was like a movie, showing her the small town I grew up in and all the places I went to as a kid. We even did a little trip to some close by countries. We both had a very convenient work situation where we could both be remote. So every six weeks, one of us would go visit the other one for a month. On the days we were apart, we would FaceTime every single day and we never missed a day. And talking to her was so easy. It got to a stage where we realized that going back and forth isn't sustainable. So we looked into moving to the same country together. She happens to be a European citizen through her dad. So it made sense for her to at least try to move to my country for a bit and try to work remotely. We had a great time, but realized pretty quickly that the lifestyle in my country wasn't really suited to us, including the life that we want. Plus the job market is complete trash. So we decided that because everything about the relationship was perfect, we would get legally married so that I could live with her in the States. It made more sense, even for things outside of the relationship. Like for example, I have a STEM degree that would pay extremely well in the city that she's from, and it's hard for me to get STEM jobs in my hometown. She also has a very close relationship with her family, and while I'm on good terms with mine, it's definitely not as close as hers. Anyways, I'm extremely excited for this new life in the United States. I have a lot of friends in her city from living there, and I have potential to make a serious amount of money. I came to the United States, we got legally married, and while I'm waiting for my green card, I was able to get my EAD work permit, which allowed me to secure my dream job in this dream city, which is paying me about three times more than any job I've ever had in my life. And I started this job yesterday. Anyways, around the time of the anniversary of us deciding to be exclusive, she started acting weird when I was talking about saying that it was a happy day and we should mark the occasion. She didn't respond to my text messages about it and avoided conversations when I talked about it in person. She put it down to being so stressed out at work and to be fair, she has a very stressful job so I believed her. But I still had a weird feeling in my gut so I said it again a few weeks later saying that we should do something to mark the occasion now that work is less stressful even if it's late now. But when I said that she got weird about it again. So then I decided to have a snoop which I'm not proud of and I know is frowned upon by many but we have talked about it and gave each other a license to snoop around. And for the record, she snoops in my phone all the time. I don't really care. I've got nothing to hide. But for me, I've never snooped through her phone until now. Anyways, all I did was search the name of guys that she was seeing before me in her text messages and I saw all that I needed to know. The next morning, I was in a terrible mood and she could see this so after her persistently asking why, I say that I saw something on her phone and I need her to explain it to me honestly. Long story short, she had hooked up with this guy about a week after we had become exclusive. They went on a dinner date, went to a nightclub afterwards, and then went back to her apartment and spent some quality time together, if you know what I mean. And she just confessed all of this to me today. So now I'm heartbroken and I don't know what to do. We've had such a dream relationship and everything is great other than this. I also can't stay in this dream job in this really cool city if we break up. The situation in my home country is kind of bleak and I'm so conflicted for these reasons. She also said that if I decide to leave her, she completely understands, but also doesn't want to wait around pretending to be with me until I get my green card. I know we were in our early days, and I understand long distance is very tough, but I think I've got the right to be upset if she spent some quality time with someone after we agreed to be exclusive. So right now, I feel completely broken, and I seriously don't know what to do. Okay, honestly, this is a devastating situation. Can you imagine going to another country for someone you thought you were in love with, only to then find out that yes, they have been cheating on you behind your back? And it doesn't matter if it happened early in the relationship or late in the relationship. Cheating is cheating and that is not okay. But to make it even worse, you finally have your dream job, you're working on getting your green card and everything's going well, and then this gets dropped on you like a ton of bricks. Like, that has got to be so awful. Like, I can't imagine being in that kind of situation because this really would, like, completely change my life. Like, this really is completely unfair because you literally went to another country to start work, all for this lady that you thought you loved and, like, you wanted to be with. So hopefully there's some kind of, like, I don't know, immigration lawyer that can help you through this process. 
who might have a good idea of like, okay, these are your options. This is what you can do because the way you got treated by this lady is absolutely unacceptable and you do not deserve to have your life uprooted in this kind of way. An entitled old jerk tries to get up in my business by asking me why I was taking so much medication, causing me to snap at him in the pharmacy line in a way that this guy truly will never forget. Here's what happened. So I have a chronic health condition that is treatable, but it requires daily medication. I'm also a very tall and fit water polo player and aquatic marathoner, so I'm not someone who looks sick in any kind of way, which is why I think this whole situation happened in the first place. In my country, I'm able to get my medications for free for several months of supply at a time, so when I do go to the pharmacy, I usually have to fill my backpack up with several bottles of medication. Today I went and it was busy with a long line of all types of people. As I'm putting medication into my backpack, this weird old man at the window next to me starts to tap me on my shoulder and says, what's all that medication for? Now I will admit, I was pretty shocked by this and just looked at him incredulously. I said to him, I'm certainly not going to tell you. Well, he immediately responded sorry with a horrified look on his face. The pharmacist then very sternly told him that he can't ask other people those types of questions and then she turned to me and apologized to me. I told her thank you and then I walked out while everyone else in line was just kind of staring at me and this entitled old jerk. Now I suppose he meant no harm by it, but like why on earth would you ever think it's okay to ask a complete stranger about their medication or even their health conditions? I feel bad for snapping at him, but I was just so taken aback by his nosiness and I was embarrassed when I realized everyone was staring. I just don't know why some people are like this because this was absolutely unacceptable. Yeah, talk about bad manners. Why on earth would anybody in their right mind be like, hey, why do you have all that medication? It's like, dude, that is none of your business. Like, seriously, stay out of it. Like, the pharmacist was right. You can't just ask people that question. Not just because you need to mind your own business, but it could also be like a really sensitive situation. So yeah, I don't blame you for snapping at that guy because if I was in your shoes, I probably would have done the exact same thing. My former boss said that he wouldn't be able to pay me in 90 days simply because his business was falling apart. So I decided to find a new job immediately, forcing him to find a replacement despite him begging me to please stick around. Here's what happened. So my former boss didn't realize that to actually make money, he had to show up for work. Instead, he came and went as he pleased and expected me to pick up the slack and essentially try to play the role of receptionist, paralegal, office manager, and attorney. And for the record, I never gave legal advice. He just expected me to and so did his clients. His friend was my divorce attorney and worked in the same building. So he would pop in to just chat and see how things were going. But even he started noticing that my boss was absent more than not and questioned how things were going. I started confiding in him that I was really concerned because I could see my former boss shelling out more than he was making and his clients were less than pleased at never being able to speak with their attorney. Then my former boss started doing some unethical and shady things to move cases along and I started getting really nervous about what would happen if the former boss got caught and what that would mean for me. I told my attorney and former boss's friend all of this and he said that his own firm needed extra support staff but he didn't want it to appear like he was poaching me from his friend on purpose and that I had to talk with the former boss about the state of the office and see if there was a way to salvage things. Well, I never really got that chance because later that day, my former boss stormed into the office and told me that I needed to start looking for a new job and to just take the first offer I get because he was probably going to have to shut the doors in the next 90 days and he couldn't guarantee me a paycheck. I spoke with my attorney the next day about it and he shrugged and said for me to just give my two weeks notice and call it a day. Later that same day, my former boss came into the office and told me to hold off on finding a new job and to give him a month to try and turn things around. But I'm just thinking to myself, sorry, but I've got bills to pay, so I'm not going to sit idly and wonder if I'm going to be seeing another paycheck or not. I drafted my two weeks notice only because my attorney wanted this from me as a professional courtesy to his friend, and then I gave it to my former boss at the end of the pay period. Well, this is when my former boss gave me a weird look. He said to me, you're leaving, but why? So I responded by saying, well, per our conversation, you advised me to find other employment, so I did. He asked me where I was going, and then I said the friend's law firm. He said to me, seriously, when I make this business work, I'm going to want you back. Is that going to be a problem? I responded by saying, well, good luck with that. He then asked me what he's paying me. And I said to him, less than you and half the hours, but at least I know his checks won't bounce. I heard from my replacement on his first solo day as I trained him during my last week that my former boss regretted telling me on a whim to leave because I was the only one who knew anything about his cases, which you know what? It sucks to suck. He should not have left me to run his firm without any help, knowing that I'm not an attorney or a licensed paralegal, just so he could go on lavish vacations and ignore all of his clients. Even if my former boss wanted me to come back, I've already been bumped to full-time hours and gotten a raise in less than a month. And there's a promise of a second raise very soon to put me at what I was making at my former boss's place. But here, I get paid holidays, PTO, and 
and some sick leave. So basically, there's no way on God's green earth I would ever go back to my former boss, even if he begged me. Yeah, talk about a bad business decision. The second someone's like, oh yeah, I can't pay you. It's time to find another job. And then they try to double back and be like, psych, just kidding. Don't get a new job. Like I would have already had a new job lined up right then and there. No one's going to mess with my paycheck and no one is going to make it so I can't make ends meet. Especially if I'm the one putting in all the hard work, like that would make me go insane. There's no way that's going to happen. So if I was in the original poster shoes, I absolutely would have done the same thing. I would have gone to this guy's competition and been like, okay, it's less pay and it's less hours, but you know what? It's better than not getting paid because what this boss did was completely inappropriate. And I do not blame you for moving on in the slightest. My husband and I were planning on getting divorced, but my husband ended up cheating on me before we could make that happen. And after my sister-in-law put my husband on blast and basically made all of this public, I'm now struggling with the results of this situation. And at this point, I really don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So my husband and I have been together for 17 years and married for 10. We have two daughters, ages 14 and 16, and I got pregnant very early in the relationship, but me and my husband decided to make it work. We were happy for a while, obviously had another daughter, and eventually decided to make it official, and we were very happy for a time. We've been drifting apart for years. We've never been a couple prone to arguing or fighting. We are both avoiders, but a year or so ago, I realized we were avoiding each other more and more. We've both had mental health struggles, and just managing our daily relationships responsibilities took so much out of us that we didn't have anything left for each other. When we did talk, it was mostly about logistics and the kids. We finally had the divorce talk about 10 months ago and we both agreed it was probably the right thing to do, but neither of us was enthusiastic to uproot our whole lives, deal with the financial side of things, or face breaking it to the kids. We talked about whether maybe we can still make it work and fall back in love, whether we should consider marital counseling or something. Things were left very open-ended. Then, a week later, my father passed away. We both embraced that as an excuse and agreed to revisit the issue later, but never did. Now, the last year has been rough. I've been mourning my dad and always had the future of our marriage in the back of my mind, but we've pretty much kept operating as if that conversation never happened. At this point, I'm still wondering if we can work things out, and I'm asking my friend for contact information for any kind of like marital counselors they might have. Well, to make a long story short, my sister-in-law spots him out and about with another woman and she loses her mind. She puts him on blast to her whole family, and it finally gets back to the kids. Now, I'm obviously not thrilled about it, but I'm also not going to act like it's the end of the world when our relationship had deteriorated to essentially us being roommates with shared children who hook up occasionally. He apologized and we agreed that clearly it's time to separate and that he's going to find some kind of apartment or something like that. And I'm having my own emotions about all of this and it's honestly been rough. Well, as a result of all of this, the kids won't even speak to him. They're saying that once he moves out, they never want to see him again. And this is devastating for him and upset to me because he's a great dad and a good influence on them. The explanation that I've gone with for both his family and the kids is that the relationship has been essentially over and we've been holding off on divorce while I'm dealing with my dad's estate. But there was no big betrayal here. Most of his family accepted that along with a reminder that we have kids to worry about and the only concern in all of this is keeping it friendly and drama free for their sake. But his sister and my kids have not. My older daughter keeps asking me if we agreed that it was okay to see other people and I'm not willing to straight up lie to her, so I've just been going with, well, I'm not going to get into the details of everything, and repeating what I said previously, but she keeps parroting her aunt that if we didn't agree to see other people, then it is cheating, and at this point, I don't really know what to do here. I'm not going to lie and say I don't have some level of frustration towards my husband for jumping into another woman's bed without thinking about what it could do to the kids or having the courtesy to let me know that things are definitely over. I'm worried about my kids picking up on that emotion from me when I'm trying to present a united front with my soon-to-be ex. I'm frustrated that I don't get to process all of this privately because my sister-in-law is a gossip and she likes to stir the pot. I can tell my girls feel incredibly hurt and betrayed and I can't help but blame myself as well because clearly we should have put this marriage to rest a long time ago and saved us all this grief. How do I fix this moving forward? What should I do? Okay, honestly, I don't think there's anything you can do to fix this. Yes, it does sound like you two probably should have separated a while back, but there was way too much going on and your dad passed away and that in and of itself can be crazy and I completely understand that. But the person who crossed the line like seriously was your husband. And yes, the circumstance sucks and your sister-in-law is a gossip and she's putting all this out in the public. But at the end of the day, she is right. Your husband cheated on you like he straight up did that. No matter how you try to frame it, that is exactly what happened. And I'm honestly right there with you when you're like, okay, I want to process this privately. I don't want everybody knowing my business and I don't want this out in the open like this. So truly, I'm so sorry you're dealing with all of this and I'm so sorry that this is the route your husband decided to 
take. Because regardless of how your relationship really was going, this truly ended up being completely unfair for both you and your daughters. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.